Ladies and gentlemen, it is a great pleasure and indeed an honor to welcome the first military administrator of Lagos State, a man generally described as the architect of modern Lagos, His Excellency Brigadier General Mobilaji Johnson. It is not a frequent occurrence that a past ruler in Nigeria should come out with clean hands if subjected to a probe on corruption and self-enrichment. One man who stands out boldly among the extremely few who have and who can pass this litmus test of selflessness and transparency in leadership is the first military governor of Lagos State, Brigadier General Mobolaji Johnson, retired. Generally referred to as the architect of modern Lagos, Brigadier General Johnson administered and governed Lagos from 1966 to 1975, a period of nine years in which he gave the city of Lagos and the state in general a new international look through the construction of highways, bridges, and modern structures. For example, in order to make it possible for people to travel from one part of Lagos State to the other without having to pass through a neighboring state, Brigadier General Johnson built and commissioned the Itoiki Bridge to link Ekbe to Ikorudu in 1968. In 1969, work commenced on the Lagos Badagri Highway, and it was originally meant to be a single carriageway. However, when Brigadier General Johnson visited the United States later that year, he came back with the inspiration to make the Lagos Badagri Highway a double carriageway, the first ever in Nigeria. When the expressway was officially opened by General Yakubu Gowan in 1973, a big display board was conspicuously positioned, which dedicated the road to Lagos taxpayers in order to encourage citizens to pay their taxes. What, sir, would you say was your greatest achievement? I think one thing I'm happy about is that looking back today, going back to 1996, then 97, when Lagos State was created, trying to fulfill the yearning of our own fathers who, who wanted a Lagos State. And uh, don't forget, Lagos State was like a ping pong. There was a time getting really the war. There was a time it was a part of the West. Yes. There was a time it was a federal capital. But the aspiration of a four year, because what we call Nigeria, a lot of history came from here, from the colonial administration here. Yes. And to come out, they disenfranchise the people. Like they don't have a say other than the city hall. Yes. And everybody wants to turn a legal belong to all of us. Yes. It wasn't right. It's still even relevant to today's political talks. Those people are four years, and my generation and the one after us want to feel that they have their own state as well. Right. And to feel that a young man who had that opportunity, I didn't create the states, the federal government created the state. It was instrumental to it. Yes. And that I was in a position to establish that state. And today, the state is still in existence. Right. I think to me, it's a sort of, sort of joy. Yes. And uh, with all my modesty, I feel nice when I attend some public functions. And they refer to me as the first governor of Lagos State. Lagos State. Yes. To me, a lot has been achieved. Yes. And uh, that is something years after. The state is still in existence. Brigadier General Johnson executed many other projects, including the reclamation of the Bar Beach shoreline and the allocation of plots to the various states of the Federation for the construction of their liaison offices. What would you say to people who say that your time, that is the Gowan era, was characterized by white elephant projects? What would you say to this one? What is the white elephant? That's right. Is it? I was part of the Gowan uh, era. Yes. Tell me, 
you bring in a place like the Tinkan Island port, it is such a short time like that. We were able to host the African, not just the cup, African yes, Games. African Games. In 1973. Yes. We built the stadium. We built the port, the Tinkan Island port. That's right. A Papa port was extended. That's right. We build the highway yes, to Badagri. We build the flyovers in Lagos. Right. Can you just shut your eyes and think back and think, if those things are not on the ground today, we are not going to stand still. That's true. So when people talk of white elephants, for example, yes. which, one? The, which one is a That's white one. elephant? When General Motala Mohammed took over power in 1975, all military governors under the ousted regime of General Yakubu Gowon were relieved of their duties and their activities probed by the new regime. Brigadier General Mobolaji Jansen came out completely clean, cleared of any malpractice. This was highly significant because it underscores Brigadier Jansen's personal beliefs and guiding principles. First, he was honest, because to have honest people in high office in this country, we know it's rare. And you know, the governors were investigated after they left office. And I think only himself and Governor Ruti were found not to have abused their office. It's a very strict and straightforward person. He likes things being done in a proper manner. You know, there's no cut shots to anything. You have to do your job properly. Till tomorrow, of all the military governors that have served Lagos State, wherever Brigadier General Boris Johnson turns out, that difference is still accorded. It is unbelievable. I've never heard of anyone say anything you know, negative about him or refuse to acknowledge his presence. It came naturally. Don't forget I talked to you about the type of background I had, the type of parentage we had, Parenting that give us values. So when people were congratulating me at the end of the uh, probe and just myself and Walero Timi that we are cleared and I was the longest serving, uh, I was strong enough to tell people, I said, listen, I accept this congratulation in the sense that the name was taken away from us. Now mine was given back to me. That was the congratulation. But for remaining clean, to me, that was what it should be, and that it is what it is still should be today, to give service to the people. My father was strong. My parents were strong, hard workers, and they always say to us in Yoruba, not your money, won't she? In other words, know your background, know where you're coming from. And like uh they will, he will say, say, Ogumagbo, Mimashi, you don't want people to hear something, don't do it. But you cannot hide this thing. Eventually, they must come out. So, to me, it came naturally that you should give service without looking for any gratification. And I can proudly say today, that while I cannot say I'm an angel, because I don't even have wings anyhow, I can say that, look, I want the human being that can stand before me and say, Bolaji, you're talking, you're opening your big mouth. That in my nine years of administration, somebody gave me this before I did this. So that was my own standard. Some people believe in preparing for the rainy day Okay, if you want to work hard, you want to do business here, but not at the expense of your own administration, not diverting money to your own private pocket, not a question of overinflating a contract because you are the one to approve the contract. Then you go and share the, con the money with somebody later on. I've had all sorts of funny, stupid, silly things that I just say, thank goodness, we've left that time. We are not cash, cash, Money you have to use the oil money for the betterment of the people. With hindsight today, maybe some of the things could have been better planned. Yes. We can probably say that we were the first regime that was having five-year development program 
He went to the first one and the second one. The third one was about to happen when we were out. Planning ahead, that is what is the problem with Nigeria. We are never planning ahead enough. And um, you know, I can just tease. Yes. Uh, I always bring in my analogy. I say, we well, say the European world is more developed. That's right. Why are we Africans still far behind? I said, nature has been the cause of it. I say, they always say that uh, you should see beyond your nose or your noses. They live in a temperate climate. Kata is coming out from their nose. They blow their nose. And they grow it like that. So the nose seems are getting longer. <laughs> but in Africa, the heat, they are still like this. And it's, and it's getting flat. They are flat. No, no, no. <laughs> Brigadier General Mobolaji Johnson was born on the 9th of February 1936 in Lagos, where his father, who was from Abelkuta, had settled since the age of 11. His mother was former Miss Dudley Coker, whose father worked in the railways and was of Sierra Leonean extraction. Brigadier General Johnson speaks very fondly of his parents, from whom he acquired his well acclaimed humility and practical skills. He attended Baptist school, Yaba, and Methodist school before gaining admission into Hussey College, Worry in 1952. In 1954, he came back to Lagos to continue his education in Methodist Boys High School, where he finished in 1957. Brigadier General Jones's military career began in 1959 when he entered the Officer Cadet Training School, Ghana from where he later proceeded to Sanders in the United Kingdom. After his military training, he served with the United Nations peacekeeping troops in the Congo before returning to Lagos. In 1966, he was promoted to the rank of major before he was appointed military administrator of Lagos State. When you were retired, yeah, exactly. you were unprepared for it. Actually. But I think you were even more unprepared for being a governor, weren't you? Absolutely. Because you were barely 30 when you became the governor of Lagos State. The late uh, Aguirre brought me in yes. as the administrator of, of the Lagos. then federal territory, and all what you call the colony provinces, where Batagri could do. They belong to the West. Yes. So I was administrator right. of the federal capital. And, you, were, uh, you were barely 30 at the time, weren't you? Yes, when I became mm -hmm. administrator, I think I was. Uh, um, just three months or so, over 30. Three that was in 1966. In February 66, a month after the coup of January 66, I turned 30. What? So I was in charge of the station in um, Benin, where Niger was then the governor, first governor of the uh, military regime then, yeah. of the then Midwest. Midwest so he said he couldn't be there without uh, having military presence. So I became the station commander mm -hmm. of the military setup in the Midwest. It was from there, Lady okay. Ronsi brought me to Lagos as administrator. Yes, and mm -hmm. then we did not know that states would be created. Yes. So when states were created in 1967, I became governor of the state. There have been so many reasons why the coup took place in the, in the first place, right? What, in your opinion, was the real reason? behind the 1966 coup? I was in the military. Yes. And don't forget, uh, some of us, we were and we are still what we refer to as traditional military officers yes. who went in for a military career That's right. without any other motivation, yes. without any eye on uh, the superlative of becoming head of state or something like That's that right. in those days. And so, we were not even thinking about the coup. But the other boys who came into the army, and some of them were graduates, yes. some of them were direct uh, university entrants, I think they had some other ideas. Yes. But let us see the setup that made the, the fertile ground for my be inverted commas, their own ambition. Yes. Um, whatever anybody may say, with the hindsight, if you can cast your mind back to the, I don't know how old you are, part I won't go into that. Yes, sir. But no, if you can don't. cast your, your mind back to the 
atmosphere at that time. The West was in a turmoil. Yes. The calling operation went here. Mm -hmm. The Agbe choirs were going on yes. in the West. And um, don't forget the seat of the federal government was here in Lagos. Yes. Very, very close. And then you have two in the north, the uh, what you call the middle belt, whatever was going on then. In the middle belt, I'm talking of the chief area who were trying to resist being under the northern uh, 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 administration. Brigadier General Johnson found his military career very interesting and challenging especially his time at the Federal Guards, now Brigade of Guards, which he nurtured. The GOC himself, I understand, personally picked me from confidential report that I should come and command the now Brigade of Guards, it was known then as Federal Guards. So that was the challenge thrown to me from by the man at the very top. And there I was, walking like a beaver, Proud to say he became the uh, real strong unit in the Nigerian army, in sports, in everything. We were commanding all the ceremonial parades in Lagos, the KPs and the key points and the VIPs visit to Nigeria. We were in charge of it. And to the extent that even when the civil war broke out and the rebels from the Biafra were coming through at uh, Ore. It was the Federal Guards that was the nucleus of the unit quickly raised to become second division under late Mutala Mohammed that went and stopped that advance in Ore. Brigadier General Johnson is married with children. His wife, former Miss Olufumi Layo Aganga Williams, recalls how they met about 40 years ago and threw some light on the person of Brigadier General Johnson. We met first of all in church a few years back, well, over 40 years back. And um, it was during the harvest festival in church. And by mistake, he knocked my handbag down because he was sitting in the pew right in front of me and I was sitting behind him and said, oh, I'm sorry. And a friend of mine said, oh, why should you, why, you know, well, it's okay, don't worry. I said, no, it's not okay. It's my bag that had been knocked down. So he said, oh, I'm sorry. So he picked up the bag and gave it to me. And he used to come and visit. He would come on his bicycle, leave the bicycle at the backyard and come in. My grandmother was always there. And, uh, you know, so we sort of got to know each other. And after some time, I left to go to England to study. And about um, a year or so after, he came also to England. But in the meantime, we corresponded with each other. And um, he came to see me. I was in Dara. He came to see me in Dara. And um, our friendship just continued and it grew until eventually we got married. I will describe him as a fair person, um, honest, um, Sympathetic, uh, empathic too, because you know he puts himself in the position of, of other people. Brigadier General Johnson, tall and impressive, was an all-round sportsman in his younger days. He played squash, polo, tennis, card games, and took active part in athletics. Growing up as kids, it was very. It was very, we wanted to make sure we were all very active. We took part in a lot of sports at the time, running, athletics, tennis, football, swimming, polo, any sport that there was going, he made us uh, do that one. So the upbringing was good there, it was quite challenging. You really got to understand how to get up, you know, through sports, challenge yourself and really you know, push yourself to the best of your potential. And, you know, he had so many trophies to show that he had done the same before, so we had no excuse. <laughs> so, yeah. Above all else, his honesty, his humility, his love of God in a quiet way, and his love of 
other fellow men and his uh, foresight in things. Friends need a lot to Balaji. He is loyal and faithful to them. You will never hear Balaji curse. We try not to curse. We try not to retaliate because Father says retaliation is God's. Leave him to God. And our father was a very strict man, but he was very fair. And Bolaji is copying him. These are the things, you know, which I notice about Bolaji and which I think has made him a very, very important person um, in the society. Uh, he has been my prefect at school. And uh, what I remember about him is this impressive, um, gentle giant posture of his, um, very much involved in athletics, particularly the ones demanding of you know physical strength, like shot put and javelin. Um, but you know, then our paths crossed on the day he invited me to be considered to serve as a commissioner in his administration. And uh, I took that opportunity to remind him, of course, that uh, I knew him at school, but he had forgotten all about it. And I jokingly said, you were so tall, you were six foot tall, I was barely four foot three, and you could not have noticed me. But, you know, working with him was a fantastic eye-opener um, to the qualities that first endeared him to join the military, and secondly, to have been identified by his superiors to be the first military governor of Lagos State. And uh, if anyone is talking about democracy these days, my fondest memories of him was the his quiet demeanor, his capacity to listen to members of his cabinet, and to try and summarize on the basis of some kind of informed, intelligent sifting of all the presentations made by all members of the cabinet. It has been watching you and your wife uh, you've been a role model to myself and my husband. I will speak for mommy because I'm used to her, I'm more close to her than you. My husband, you are his role model. She has been my role model. But thank you for giving her the opportunity to be first lady at that time. And I will probably say she's giving me one of the few successes I will record. In, for my own time, when if it happens to come, which I think by the grace of God will be given eight years. You were given nine, so <laughs> I'm giving eight years to give um, credible legacies like you've done. Your Excellency, you earlier told us that your greatest achievement was to be an instrument of fulfilling the yearnings of your people to create a Lagos state. Now, Tell me, sir, what would you most like to be remembered by? Just feel that the greatest happiness I will have is that when the time comes for me to go, just like what happened to my father about three years ago, we didn't just lose a father, we lost a friend. And I want to remember that my family. Thank you. Thank you very much. On behalf of the whole market, of labor to present this mark to one of the colleagues. Brigadier General Olufun Shomo Bolaji Johnson, a symbol of humility, dedication, uprightness, and honesty, even as a military governor, a perfect role model in leadership.